Good afternoon and welcome to the July 22nd briefing on COVID-19. Skagit County remains in phase two and we are a community in need to recommit to our recovery efforts. It is time to band together and use the most effective scientific intervention known to stop the spread of COVID, wearing a mask. Face masks are emerging as the one most powerful weapon we have to fight this virus. There continues to be growing evidence that facial coverings help prevent transmission, even if someone who is infected with COVID-19 is in close contact with others. It can be difficult to remain committed to physical distancing and getting used to wearing a mask whenever we leave the house. Our long established habits and routines have had to change dramatically, but they need to, to save lives. Currently, there are 707 cases in Skagit County. We've had 17 deaths and over 70 people hospitalized. This is an increase of 80 cases in one week. The county has seen an increase in cases due to the 4th of July holiday and those summer activities and travelers from the, from the county and the state and people attending large gatherings and coming into close contact with friends or extended family. We're still dealing with the compounding difficulties of the emotional, economic, and physical strain of COVID-19 and many uncertainties that surround us. Please wear a mask to be part of the recovery right now we are vacillating between recovery and reacting to surges in the case. We will not make strides back to normalcy without long-term commitment to wearing a mask, physical distancing, good hygiene practices. We could all be united against this virus by embracing these powerful tools. The governor, along with the Secretary of Health, announced changes to the Safe Start plan that places new limits on social gatherings and a ban on live entertainment across the state. These changes for both phase two and phase three uh, for all counties went into effect Monday. All gatherings at every phase must have physical distancing and all attendees must wear masks. Under the new Safe Start phase limits, the number of individuals allowed in social gatherings during phase three will be reduced from 50 people to 10 people. Counties in phase two may continue to have social gatherings up to five people. These restrictions apply only to social gatherings such as book clubs, barbecues, picnics, birthday parties, house parties, baby showers, social clubs, garage and estate sales, and gatherings on the beach and in the parks. All live entertainment, indoor and outdoor, statewide are not allowed. This includes drive-in concerts, comedy clubs, music and restaurants, funerals, weddings, and religious activities are exempt from these restrictions. The unfortunate truth is that we are seeing cases rise in our community and around the state. We must not let our guard down. We have dialed up our economy, we've participated in more activities, and we've started down an unsustainable path. The virus is continuing to spread. Evidence suggests that COVID-19 is easily and commonly spread through face-to-face -face interactions, such as gatherings in the home, at social gatherings or at work. We have to change our habits and the way we interact to save lives. If cases continue to rise, many counties face the possibility of dialing back on activities that are allowed. To move to phase three, a county must have the following. A county must have fewer than 25 new cases per 100,000 residents. Over 14, and that has to go for over 14 consecutive days. We currently have 90.6 new cases per 100,000 residents 
here in Skagit County. A county must have greater than 50 individuals tested per new case during the prior week. We currently have 24.2 tested per each new case. Number three, the percentage of individuals testing positive must be less than 2%. We are currently at 4.1%. The percentage of beds occupied in the county must be less than 80%. We are currently at 76.7%, and beds mean available hospital beds. Number five, lastly, the percentage of those hospital beds occupied by COVID-19 cases must be less than 10%, and we're currently at 4.2%. We are st still currently meeting two of the five metrics. All counties remain paused in their current phase until after the July 28th per the governor's order. Many experts are saying that the pandemic could be brought under control if everyone started wearing masks right now. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal shows researchers simulating the effectiveness of a mask when someone coughs. The studies show that droplets expelled from the double-layered cotton mask traveled forward about two and a half inches on average, and the most leakage escaped from gates between the nose and the face. Loosely fitting facial coverings, including folded cotton handkerchiefs with earlobes, have droplets that can travel one and a half feet, and a bandana had droplets traveling three and a half feet. An off-the-shelf cone-shaped mask had droplets travel about eight inches on average. They found that masks they studied, a stitched, double-layered cotton mask was the most effective in preventing droplets from being emitted forward. Droplets from uncovered coughs travel about eight feet on average and a maximum of about 12 feet. This is why COVID-19 is so concerning. People who do not wear a face mask are spreading the disease, and they may not even have symptoms yet. Many survivors of this virus suffer lasting impacts on and organ damage. This is not something you want to risk when th there's something this simple as wearing a mask. The CDC used a Missouri hair salon where two stylists directly served 139 clients. And, and this, this was done in May before testing positive for COVID-19. As an example of the effectiveness of wearing masks, the stylists both either wore double layer cotton or surgical masks and nearly all 139 clients who received services reported that they wore a mask. No COVID-19 symptoms were identified in the 139 clients and of the 67 tested, all were negative. It was projected that 95% of the American population began wearing masks and the expected death toll would drop to no more than 40,000 cases. There, they continue to be res there continues to be research that suggests the risk of infection to the wear of a mask is decreased by 65%. This means that if I'm with someone and we both are wearing a mask, the likelihood of spreading COVID between either dimish, diminishes significantly. So at the city, we have to do city business. So next week, the Anacortes Municipal Court will have its first hearing scheduled, actually tomorrow, July 23rd, and next Thursday, July 30th, with hearings to begin at 8.30 a.m. and to be done in 15-minute sessions. There will be many requirements of all individuals for COVID-19 protection. This includes limiting the individuals in the courtroom to parties of the case only, a, fat, a face mask requirement, and defendants remaining outside the building until their specific hearing time. The staff of the municipal court have been wearing, working hard to put detailed 
safety protocols into place. The side of the building that houses the Anacortes Police Department still remains closed to the public during phase two. Our finance department continues to evaluate information as it comes in week by week. And the finance director briefs the city council on the impact of COVID-19 on the city's budget. The city took decisive action early on, and because of that, along with conservative budgets, it means that even though our sales tax revenue is down over 20%, we are looking at less than a 10% impact on the budget due to the decrease in sales tax. The city council and I will be in discussion on how to best navigate the, this economic crisis brought on by COVID. We will be having an in-depth discussion on the development of the 2021 budget priorities and whether a yearly budget may best suit the needs of the city. We will be discussing how to plan for next year at our next council meeting, July 27th. We are focused on how to plan for the unknown while maintaining a focus on the important to what is important to this community. If you would like to participate in this discussion with the city council, please call into the city council meeting at 360-293-1904 and our staff will patch you in live to the council meeting. So once again, this will be next Monday night, July 27th, 293 1904. And in the Parks Department, they're holding Survivor Camp next week at Washington Park. This is a great opportunity for the kids who have been stuck inside to enjoy and explore the outdoors in a safe, physically distanced way. The Parks Department is continuing to find ways to offer outdoor recreation opportunities to our youth and in our community. The library has continued to be busy with summer reading, and that means prizes every week, plus a special Harry Potter birthday prize for one lucky reader next week. Any reader under 18 years of age can submit a reading recommendation in a photo, a video, or a written form online to enter and win the Harry Potter prize bag courtesy of the Friends of the Library, Little Tugs, and the business. The contest ends Friday, July 31st. Adults can participate in summer reading too. Reserve books for curbside pickup Monday through Friday and check the library's website for information on how to place polls and get a library card and more. The library is getting new books every day and taking requests for reserves. Read online or in person with your library card. And remember, if you need Wi-Fi, the library parking lot has free Wi-Fi for you to use. While Skagit County remains in phase two, businesses and workers are struggling. Businesses as we know, know it are drastically altered. And this threatens the economy, economic health of our neighbors and our community. We at the city recognize this and want to do whatever we can to help, whether that's through access to funds or by creating new ways to have expanding shopping opportunities in our downtown during phase three. We're very focused on Main Street businesses and we want to do our part to step up and support them. One way to do that is to spread this simple message, wear a mask on your face and save your favorite place. Right now, it's all about safety. Safety for our customers, our employees, and economic safety for our business owners. The question we are all wrestling with is how do we make people safe for shopping and working in local shops? No one has had the answer, but our city businesses and residents are working together to find an answer. It all starts with wearing a mask. So let's mask up Anacortes. Gadget County Commissioners have awarded over $160,000 in grant funding to local businesses. 
and now has announced a second small business grant, grant round designed to help local businesses keep their doors open, retain jobs, and comply with COVID-19 prevention for public health and safety measures. So all small businesses are the backbone of Skagit County, and the loss of funds and reduced sales sh show and cancellation and decreased tourism has impacted small businesses significantly. Eligible businesses who have up to 25 employees, as well as nonprofits profits focusing on basic needs, you can apply for the $750,000 in funding available. The maximum that will be awarded to any one entity is $25,000. And the cutoff for application is next July 31st, which is a week from Friday. So if you need money for your business or your, your um, agency, please apply. Island Hospital has tested a total of 2,897 people with a total of 46 positive cases eight positive hospitalized cases, and we have had no deaths here in Anacortes. We have had, seen an increase in four cases in just one week here in Anacortes, and in the last month, we have seen an increase in 12 cases. This morning, I visited the Skagit Valley College testing site to acknowledge and thank the incredible work of volunteers that have been testing over 500 people a day. 595 were tested on the 13th of this month, setting a new record. This testing infrastructure is a pivotal part of stamping out COVID-19 in our county. It is run by volunteers from our community, and I'm grateful for their commitment and their compassion. They have done over 15,000 tests, with 307 people testing positive so far. If you're worried you've been exposed to COVID-19, please quarantine, and after five to seven days, you can come and get a test. Anytime between Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the Skagit Valley College. They also are in need of volunteers. If you would like to volunteer, please call the Skagit County Health Department and they'll put you to work. Globally, we have had nearly 14.6 million cases and over 607,000 people have died worldwide from COVID-19. Across the country in the United States, we have seen 3.8 million cases and have had almost 150,000 people lose their lives. In Washington State, we currently have had 48,000 cases and 1,453 people have died. We expect to see these numbers continue to rise, and here at home, we need to make a commitment to defeating this virus and protect our community and the people that we care about most. So now I'm at the question and answer period of, this, of the briefing, and I have three questions today. Question number one. Is it a requirement for people to wear masks at the gym? If the gym is not enforcing this, what should I do? Answer, people at the gym are required to wear a mask if they cannot maintain a six-foot separation from a non-household member in the gym. If the gym is not enforcing the mask order, it's a business violation. The state has set up a safe start violations you can go to and fill out with the State Department of Labor and Industry, and they will follow through on your complaint. Question number two, when do, I, when do I not have to wear a mask? You do not have to wear a cloth face covering when you're in your own home or in your own car. If you're the only person in your household, it, and you also do not need to wear a face covering when you're exercising outdoors, if you have plenty of space. It's a good idea to keep one in your pocket though, in case you come across other people that you can't stay six feet away from. 
and some people may have health conditions or circumstances that make wearing a cloth face covering difficult or dangerous. Adults, oh, and that's, that's the answer to that one. So question number three, if someone near me isn't wearing a mask, should I say something to them? No. Someone may have a medical reason for not wearing a face covering. Whether those around you are wearing face coverings or not, focus on keeping six feet distance between you and washing your hands often. Well, we've been meeting here for the last 14 weeks, and we've weathered and are weathering a global pandemic together. And there has been a lot of disbelief. And there's also been some acceptance. And there's been a new way to live and work and recreate and learn and socialize. There are important conversations that we've never had before. And there are vaccines being developed and worked on across the world by medical experts. There have been less premature babies born because moms have been able to stay home. There is still a community that we love. There are masks of every design and cover, color covering our faces. There are businesses that are adapting and creating new options for shoppers. There is an economy that is dependent on these creative measures by businesses large and small. There is an entrepreneurial spirit that has always been part of our culture to be able to launch something new turn around a failing situation and adapt to changes in our society. There's been problem solving and we're creating a new vision. This is so important during this time that we have to keep our vision and our actions focus, focused on our future horizon. Today, I read the Oxford University and British and Swedish pharmaceutical companies reported that there is a COVID-19 vaccine that has shown in early human trials to be safe and stimulate the immune response. So there is hope. And as I shared, today I also visit the Skagit County COVID testing site at Skagit Valley College, and I observed volunteers as they safely and effectively tested well over 400 people during the day. I asked them what the future was. They said they planned on testing at least through the end of the year. And then their hope was to turn that site into a vaccination site as soon as a vaccine is ready. I was heartened by their vision from testing to vaccine. We will persevere. We are Skagit County. We are Anacortes. Thank you for being with me today.